Hello folks, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to the series on this little Dunhill 305. Now in the last uh, episode I sort of described what the issues are and we're going to start by trying to deal with the stem because believe it or not the stem is, is, is a much bigger problem than this crack in the, in the bowl. <clears throat> now the problem with the stem is that it, it just doesn't line up properly. The most obvious issue might be be that the tenon is not um, 90 degrees to the face of the stem here. So in other words, the surface here is not 90 degrees to the surface here. Now that might be, but there's other reasons why this would not sink home properly. Um, there could be some buildup inside the the mortise. The mortise might be out of shape. Uh, this might be too long for some reason, and it might be bottoming out as, as it comes in there. And there could potentially be some obstruction along the face here, preventing it from, from sitting in properly. <clears throat> that latter one I do not believe is true. <clears throat> Excuse me. That latter I do not believe is true. Uh, I mentioned in the last episode how there's this little fillet that goes around the <clears throat> the edge of the tenon there. However, there is a very uh, substantial chamfering here that would prevent that from really being much of an issue. So I don't think that's the case. The simplest thing to do is going to be to clean and assess the, uh, the situation here in the mortise. And while we're at it, we might as well make sure to ream and clean the internals of the whole pipe because we're going to have to do that eventually anyway. This has been reamed, actually a bit over reamed, but we'll, there's still a little bit of cake on the wall that we'll take care of and maybe, maybe sand that out a little bit just to make sure that everything's even and we will thoroughly clean the airway and the uh, tenon with some bristled pipe cleaners and some ethanol. So let's get started with that. I think the we'll, we'll do the reaming off camera just because you you know how what it looks like to ream a pipe. But let's do a little bit of the cleaning on camera. So I've got here uh, ethanol. It's actually Everclear, and we'll get some bristled pipe cleaners. And I'm just going to start by cleaning the airway. And by the way, I am almost certainly going to wind up doing some refinishing on this pipe, so I'm not too worried if we get a little bit of alcohol on the outside, although I'll try to keep that to a minimum. You can see that was fairly dirty. So I'm just looking to see if that is a clean, open airway, and hopefully you can see it does appear to be. Uh, so I don't think we're going to have to do any reaming of that. However, let me take my smallest shank reamer here and just run it through, just to make certain. Actually could use a little bit more. It's surprising how much cake can build up inside the shank of a pipe. Yeah, so we've gotten through that. And I'll show you. That is, there, there's no briar there. That, that actually is just taking carbon buildup off the inside. Sorry, I'm moving out of shot there. <clears throat> All right. Let's 
And that is actually looking pretty good. So we'll go in with another pipe clear. I'm just dipping these in, in alcohol before I use them. Starting off with a more narrow end this time. That is quite filthy. It's funny, this pipe did not look that, that bad. But at least we know it's been smoked, uh, and, and smoked a lot, which probably says something about it. Now I do plan to retort this, so if there's any additional tar that's built up in there, we, we have the retort to draw a lot of that out as well. Our main goal right now is to get the things clean. Okay, that looks, that's looking pretty good. We want to get things clean enough that we don't have to worry about there being an obstruction. So now I, I'm going to bend that last pipe cleaner in half and get some alcohol on it and just get it in the mortise now. Kind of dirty. And I think you get the idea, so I'm going to continue to do this until everything is nice and clean. And I'll bring you back once we can see what we're working with here. Okay, so I continued to clean that, and hopefully you'll be able to see that I've gotten it pretty well cleaned out now. Um, you can you can basically see the briar now, which is good. It's still stained. It's you know not not like raw briar, but <clears throat> it's clean. There's no buildup in there. And interestingly, uh, the stem is much much looser now, but it fits much much better. It's still not perfect. There is still a slight gap over here that I I can't actually fit the card in any longer, but it is. There's definitely a gap there. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. Um, if I turn the stem, so it fits fine there as I turn it, you can see that gap is much larger. So that's suggesting to me, well first off the stem is not uh, is not made in a way that it would you know be perfectly concentric, but that's not terribly unexpected. Uh, but it also is suggesting that the tenon might be crooked. Um, it's a little bit hard to assess that. But it might be. And the fact that this is so loose is actually a bit of a clue because I'm wondering if someone tried to expand this tenon by heating it and maybe in the process bent it a little bit. Fortunately, um, with this being ebonite, we have the opportunity to take advantage of the memory that these rubbers have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this and then just let it cool down. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to in any way try to shape it or form it. I'm just going to heat it up until it's soft and then let it cool down again. And if this has been shifted from its original state, it should go back to where it started and hopefully then it will fit uh, flush perhaps not tight, but at least flush. And we can deal with tight after we deal with flush. So I will try heating it and I'll bring you back after that's done. All right, something that I uh, forgot to show you last time. Uh, I mentioned, I believe in the initial video that I made on this pipe, that there's the possibility that this mortise is out of shape. Uh, over time, these can become distorted. So the way to assess that is I'm just going to put the caliper in there and I'm going to measure the internal diameter. And you can see that's right around uh, 0.34 inches, a little bit less, maybe 0.338 inches. Um, 
and now I'm just going to hold that and rotate and you'll see some variation as this rotates around but it's well within the um, error that we're going to expect so this is essentially this this mortise is essentially a circular mortise so we're okay there um, heating seems to have helped quite a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on it is still loose but it does seem to now be fitting uh, flush and you know, we, we don't have that gap there any longer so that's great that's uh, that's definitely a win that we were able to to fix that without actually modifying anything here so we didn't have to remove any briar we didn't have to mess too much with the ebonite we just had to heat it up a little bit it went right back to where it's supposed to be so my guess is somebody tried to deal with the fact that this is loose and in doing so they wound up bending the the, the tenon off center uh, so now we're set now we do still have this oddity about this being too uh, it's almost like this stem wasn't intended for this pipe it's it's very strange uh, so I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. I mean, we might just leave it. Um, you know, maybe that's part of the charm of this pipe. Or we could try to sand the briar down a little bit and get it to better match, uh, better flow, especially here on the bottom. Uh, let me get into, you know, how much, how much do we want to change this? So this little ridge that I was talking about earlier, do we want to sand that out? Because we are going to have to do some refinishing here. So I've got some thinking to do about that. But the good news is the stem is pretty much fixed. Uh, the only thing I still need to do is expand the tenon so that it fits tightly. And I'm not going to bore you with that. It's I've, I've talked about the procedure before. Um, I just have a series of drill rods which are... Uh, that one's much too big. I'll get the smallest one, which will probably be much too small. Uh, oh, huh, I might need to get me a smaller drill rod. Anyway, the idea is to put uh, these drill rods, heat it up, put the drill rod in, and, and put it all the way in so that it uniformly expands the diameter of this. Uh, I'm going to have to get some smaller... Do I have these out of order? Yeah, I may have to get some smaller drill rods for this. That's, that's quite a narrow airway. Okay, well, we will work on that. Uh, but I'm going to draw this particular video to a close. And in the next video, which will hopefully be the last video in the series, we will be dealing with this crack. We'll be filling it. We'll be doing some refinishing, uh, putting the pipe back together, and hopefully getting it back to... Uh... So, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your uh, likes and comments. If you, if you did enjoy this and you want to keep up on the next installment, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you get notified uh, when the next video is ready. And until the next one, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon.